Hello makers, welcome back to part two of two of the Mark III Bear upgrade kit. Now, first of all, thank you very much for the support in the first one. It seems like it was quite popular, so yay. Secondly, I just need to clarify a few things. Now, as I said before, I, I didn't really need to do this, but you know, it's like, look at it. It's just, look at it. Also, yes, I could have used one of my Mark IIs in order to do this upgrade kit, because then, yes, that would have been upgrade because the Mark II frame is definitely not as solid as the Mark III. But once again, I, I don't really need to upgrade any of them because they still work very well. Some of them have over 20,000 hours, some which I still have yet to do a service on, <laughs> but they still work fine. They still print as they did on day one. And I never had any complaints from customers. I still get the same dimensional accuracy, so. But anyway, just want to clarify those. Um, so yeah, today I'm gonna to be tackling the extruder. More specifically, I'm going to be using the bear extruder. Um, so for those of you who don't know, all of this is designed by an awesome Swiss guy named Greg. I'm gonna call him Greg because I don't know if it's Gregor or Gregoire or I don't know. Greg is safe. So anyway, Greg has this awesome GitHub page where he has all of this stuff on. And what I'm going to be doing today is the X-axis assembly plus the extruder using most of the parts that I already had on the Mark III. And I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do it. So for the X-axis, I'm gonna need these three printed parts, bearings, the idler wheel for the belt, axe axis uh, stepper motor. I put all these screws and nuts and everything from the Mark III into one bag. Plus I had some extra ones lying around. So yeah, they're, that, I should have more than enough. And obviously the two linear rods uh, from the axe axis of the Mark III. First off, I'm just gonna put those nuts in place. Now, if you don't manage to just push them all the way through, the easiest way to do it is grab an M3 screw, tighten it all the way through. And while you're tightening it, the nut just inserts itself into place. Once you're done, just remove the screw once more. So I'm gonna be doing this with all four nuts here that tighten the, uh, the bearings. Next, we're gonna insert the bearings, one on one end and the other one on the other end. And you and the other one. And the other one in the other end. However, before you insert them, make sure they are aligned properly. So when you insert the bearings, um, whenever you put two next to each other, um, make sure they're not aligned perfectly like this. So you see the bearings on the side, on the inside going through. This has to be turned about halfway through between one uh, line of bearings, ball bearings, and the other. Just so there's kind of like that pattern. Next, we need four M3 by 10 to tighten the uh, bearings in place. Next, we're gonna insert the rods into the holes here. Before you attach the other side, you'll need to make sure the two bearings at the top, the top being where there's that notch over there and one at the bottom like this. Then you can just secure it in place. Now, in order to know how far in you have to push this, you have that little hole over there and you have it even on this side over here and on top here, sorry, it's a bit dirty. Um, you'll see the uh, rail going through right through there. And once it reaches right at the end there, you're done. Next, we're gonna attach the X-axis motor to that part here with the wire facing down. And we'll also need three M3 by 18 screws. You can go ahead and tighten those three screws all the way through because uh, this particular gantry does have a tensioner over here for the belt. So next part is slightly tricky because you do need a dowel pin, um, a three millimeter metal dowel pin, which goes through here in order to hold the idler in place. Now, I don't have that pin. However, I can use an M3 screw, but using an M3 screw poses a bit of an issue because that side is sticking out and that will not allow this to go in all the way through. See, it got stuck. So we need to cut that off. Now, if you have a jig, you can just 
put it in a vise and cut that off or saw it off. In my case, I don't. So I'm gonna have to MacGyver this. And to MacGyver this, don't judge me, I'm literally gonna grab one of my 60 or so um, <laughs> flush cutters and I'm just gonna keep on squeezing until it, um, yeah, until I break it off. The bag is there so if things fly off, they won't hit the camera, me in the eye or anyone else that might come into the room. As you can see, it's working. Done. So now all I have to do is just tighten that up. Okay, I'm happy with that. There, perfect. So now that that's done, all I need are two nylock knots, which I will insert in there and in here, and then push this all the way inside. Grab two M3 by 18 screws, insert them on the end. And there you have it, we have the tensioner there. So now once we put the belt through, we can just tighten those up so we have a tensioner. Next, we need some M3 nuts. We're gonna throw them there. I'm just gonna tighten them with, um, for those of you who know me, this is my, uh, this is my hammer. This is, a tool that does it all for me. And we need to throw these in there. Another one on the other side. Next, we're gonna use the lead screw, well, screw, and attach those to two nuts we just did by two M3 by 18 screws. An important thing here is do not over tighten these. Just tighten them enough for now. And that is the x-axis, that's pretty much done. So now it's time to jump onto the extruder. Once again, everything is reprinted um, in uh, Polymaker PC Max or now Polymax. And the reason why I decided to go with this design, first of all, is because I feel it helps people if they want to do this kind of extruder. Secondly, this particular extruder has a few features which um, just make it easier to swap out parts should you need to. Um, and apart from that, it's done so that the belts are perfectly aligned with where the extruder actually assembles. So there is, it's just perfectly straight belts. So first I'm gonna start with the, uh, with the extruder motor. I'm gonna be using the LDO Motors Cool Power, which is 1.8 degree, and it runs about five to 10 degrees um, cooler than the stock Prusa um, stepper motor. Gonna insert the Bontech gear, or one of the Bontech gears in, just tighten it in place. It's still not the last position, but for now I just wanna hold it in place, and I'm just gonna secure it in this part of the extruder. I'm going to insert two M3 by 25 screws over there. That's done. Make sure that the connector is facing downwards, so at, towards the hot end. Next, we're going to insert an M3 nut in that hole over there. I'm going to grab the back of the carriage and insert three nuts in the back holes here. Now, in order to secure those three nuts all the way in, just hold them in place, turn it around, take in one of the M3 bolts from the other end and just keep on tightening it until the nut makes its way all the way through. And once it's in there, just take the screw all the way out again. Turn around and insert another two screws onto these holes here. Once all the nuts are in place, we're gonna go grab those two parts and align them. Grab an M3 by 10 and insert it into this all right there. And tighten that up. Grab an M3 by 40, insert it in this corner hole up here. Push it all the way through and that secures the motor in place. Next, we're gonna grab the filament sensor, insert it into the upper slot here. Grab an M3 by 10 screw and also secure that in place. Next, grab the little PTFE filament guide, insert it in there. Then we're gonna grab the top cover and push that all the way through. 
should fit very snug. Grab two M3 by 10 screws and secure that in place. Next, we're gonna grab the filament cover and the other Bonte gear with the two bearings inside. I'm gonna slide it into its place there, grabbing the dowel and inserting that into its place. Once again, I like to use my hammer. Make sure it moves freely, which it does. And in this orientation. Finally, grab a square nut, insert it in this slot over here, push it all the way in until it aligns with that hole over there. Next, it's time to attach this lid over onto this side. However, first you need to insert a nylon washer. Now, just in case you don't have a nylon washer, it's very much okay to use a metal one. So put the nylon washer over the hole there, grab an M3 by 40 screw, push it through until it goes onto the washer. Get the lid ready. And before you push it all the way through into the extruder motor, there is the other washer you need to insert right between the stepper motor and the lid over there. And go ahead, tighten the rest. There's no need to completely tighten this because you still need to be able to open this lid over here. And before putting in the hot end, just make sure you insert this 3D printed collet just so there's no give in the PTFE tube. Next, we're gonna grab the E3D hot end. We're gonna insert it into the hole there with the PTFE tube going in and having the cables pointing downwards. No, it's not clean. This is quite heavily used E3D. Um, no, I'm gonna replace it because it still works. Leave that to the side for now. Grab this end of the hot end cover, insert a square nut up here, push it all the way through till the hole is aligned. We need a hex nut for there, another hex nut here. Next, grab the cover, put it over the hot end, making sure that this, the hot end is aligned. Once you're comfortable with that, grab two M3 by 40 screws, and just slot them in there and tighten them all the way. So if you're using the same extruder that comes with the Mark III, this will already have a cable tightened to it. This particular one comes with an external cable, which is the right length, and also has the right connector for the IZ board. So just insert that. We're gonna do a little twist over here and pass it through that path, just like that. Next, grab the Noctua fan. Pass part of the cable through that channel over there. Then what you want to do is slowly pull it in place and push it upwards like that. Then insert four M3 by 14 screws. Also make sure you have the right orientation of the fan, of course. It has to turn anti-clockwise and push the air through it, through the hot end. Next step is to align the Bontech gears. So open the hatch, push some filament through, grab that hex nut, undo it just a little bit, push the gear in place until it's perfectly aligned with the filament and re-tighten it. As you can see, the gears are slightly rusty. That's because I've never treated them with anything. So I do suggest you put some grease on them. Um, I, at the moment, I don't have any grease, but I do have some engine oil. So I'm just gonna put a little Drop just a little bit, remove any excess, and close the hatch, grab the filament while it's still in there, and just push down and insert it in through and out, just so those gears can turn around and spread the oil or the grease. Final step here is to grab an M3 by 40, insert the spring inside through that hole over there so you can secure the hatch in place. Just tighten this enough until it's flush with the cover. Next, we need to attach the extruder fan in place. Now, if you have an LDO motors, just take out that cable because you'll need that space to uh, tighten the screw in place. Grab an M3 by 18 screw, tighten that in, and it should be perfect for you to still have enough space to insert the cables. Grab another M3 by 18 and tighten the other end. So for the Pinder Probe, insert 
square nut into the slot over there. Push it all the way in until it aligns. Grab the pin down, put it roughly in place. Place the uh, pin the cover on top of it. Grab an M3 by 10 screw and tighten that in place. Next, I'm gonna grab a zip tie, put it through the slot over there. Pause the cables into it. So the cable should go up, leave a bit of space and then tighten the exit part. Just like that. And cut off the excess. Pause the cables through that channel over there. Last thing to do on this extruder is grab the fan shroud, put it over there, and just secure it in place with an M3 by 10 screw. And that is the bare extruder all done. Last thing to do, simply grab the cable for the filament sensor and insert it in place. So now that well, two parts already, it's time to marry them together. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is grab four uh, square nuts, M3 square nuts, and we're gonna insert those into two holes here and two holes down here. I've already prepared them. I'm just gonna push them all the way through. Then we're gonna grab the X axis, making sure it's the right orientation. I'm gonna face the extruder downwards, and we're gonna have to pass through the cables accordingly, so. The filament sensor cable stays to the top and through the middle of the x-axis we're going to first grab the Pinda probe and the part cooling fan and pass the cables through. Then grab the extruder cable and also the hardened cable and pass it through. Then just align the bearings into their slots and push them all the way in. Next, grab the 3D printed bearing cover, the one with the two bearings, and we're gonna put it in place over there now. Now to tighten that in place, we're gonna use two M3 by 10 screws for the top two holes, and two M3 by 18s for the bottom ones. What I suggest you do is tighten the screws and make sure this still moves freely. Next is the belt. Now, first of all, make sure that the tensioner here is slightly pointing out, so don't push it all the way in. Make sure you have enough slack so you can tighten the, uh, the belt itself. Insert one side of the belt into the teeth at the back. Push them all the way in. Next, pause the belt. Around the idler. Push it through towards the stepper motor. Make sure it's in the right orientation, of course. Around the extruder and back through. If you're using the same belt, as you can see, have more than enough available. So you don't need to change the belt. Next, I'm gonna tension it as much as I can with my hand until I can insert the teeth inside their appropriate space. Once all the teeth are in place, just grab the belt and cut any excess off. You have a bit of space there just to put the extra bit of belt. And make sure that the belt is all the way in. Um, just in case, if you can grab like kind of like a spatula, which is not um, tapered here, so this is flat, and just push it all the way in. And that should do the trick. Now, as you can see, it's, it's tensioned, but not too much. So what we're gonna do next is grab the two tensioner screws here and start tightening the belt. I'd suggest giving it a couple of turns each side until you get that kind of bass sound. And it's, it's done from there. Next, grab an M3x4T. We're gonna use these two parts over here. We're gonna pause the screw all the way from there and into the other one all the way through. Once it's almost through, just gonna align it with that hole over there and tighten it in place. Next, we're gonna grab the last 3D printed part. We're gonna pause the cables through it and put it over the rest of the back. Now, as you can see, 
Uh, one of the advantages of this carriage is that if you need to change the belts or anything, or if you need to tension the belts, all you have to do is just remove this part here rather than having to take off all of the back. To put this in place, you're gonna need an M3 by 18 screw for the top hole here, and two M3 by 10 screws for the bottom. Next, grab the sensor cable, make sure there is a bit of give up here. Pass it through that channel until it comes out all the way through to the bottom here. Next, we're gonna grab the nylon guide. Make sure it's a nylon 2.75 millimeter filament, nothing else, uh, especially not PLA, because it will become brittle over time and tear off your cables as it did with mine. Insert it in there until it's secure in place. It goes in about one centimeter, so it gives you a bit more rigidity. Next, we're gonna grab a couple of cable ties, grab the hot end and thermistor cable. Use the two channels at the bottom to secure it in place with cable ties. And cut off the excess. Then you're gonna grab the sleeve. I happen to have the new Mark III S kit, so I can use this sleeve rather than the one that there was before. Wrap it around the cables, which are, which are still not secured, right at the top here. However, then, once you go past that part, include also the nylon PLA and the, therm uh, the thermistor and the hot end cable. So they go all the way in together. Once the cables are wrapped all the way through, you have three top slots here, so you can tighten the cables to the extruder assembly, nice and tight. And just snip off the ends. And that is the extruder assembly and the x-axis assembly all done together. Everything else will be assembled another episode. And that ladies and gents is part two, which was the extruder assembly and the x-axis. So next will be the rest of the assembly and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Now, for those of you who made it so far, once again, I need to reiterate something because it keeps coming up in the comments. I'm doing this because it looks awesome and because I can. I'm not doing it as an upgrade myself because you know, the Mark III's work fine as they were. Yes, I could have used the Mark II um, for this project, but I chose the Mark III. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.